<laughs> morning, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, that's a morning to you, and that's a morning to the people online. Um, I shall just get my Facebook feed up. <laughs> Oh, that's the wrong feed. <laughs> I know, I'm just trying to, uh, there we go. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry to you all at home who are sitting, listening to me, asking whether we're live and online. And uh, anyway, Good morning to you all. Good to connect with you this morning. If you're, if you're signing in online this morning, do um, sign in, say hi to everyone. It's so lovely to see the names appearing on the, uh, on the screen there. Um, we've got a few people in church with us this morning, which is fantastic. Morning to you all. Thank you for coming and joining with us. Um, we're expectant this morning, aren't we? That God is going to move and we're going to experience his presence and his power, both here in this place and in our homes as we watch on. So my wife is watching this morning. Good morning, Angela. <laughs> I guess you've got Holly with you there. Possibly, uh, yeah, Ben as well. So morning, morning, James, Karen. We've got Lynn and Pete with us this morning. Morning to you guys. Hope you're doing okay. Got Rob and Wendy with us watching. Let me just say congratulations. I think we should have a big congratulations to Rob, who landed a new job this week. God is good. God is so good. <laughs> So, you know, we were praying for Rob, um, you know, with, with this was the impact of the, 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 the coronavirus really uh, upon his work um, and a, a big local company. And so he was made redundant and then three weeks he got a, a temporary job at another company and they've given him a, a, a sort of a, a two year contract now. So that's good news. So well done, Rob. And uh, yeah, great, great. Uh, Great news. We've got Jodie with us as well this morning, and Rob and Janet are watching. Good morning to you guys. I'm going to grab my coffee if that's okay. <laughs> you ready for Christmas? It's on fri Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Is that right? Friday. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> we, had a, we had a fab day here yesterday. Um, uh, down in town, it was... Uh, it was lovely, the guys were singing and we had some lovely, lovely conversations and somebody I met yesterday is here with us this morning, so good morning to you. <laughs> and, uh, and here in the afternoon, um, there were the children's parties and it was lovely to see the place fizzing and buzzing with children. And is it young people's parties, was that yesterday? The week before? Last week. So. This is great, isn't it? Just sort of a little bit of normality in these uh, strange times that we are in. So some more folks have signed in. Melinda and Barney are with us this morning. Tracilia. We're um, back here this afternoon. It's uh, sort of quarter to six, six o'clock. Um, Looking all right outside at the moment, isn't it? Um, we're going to be having carols around the tree outside. Um, and uh, un unfortunately, we, we are f we're full up because we've had to limit the numbers on that. So we, we were limited to 50. So we we're, we're full up with that. So um, unfortunately, uh, we can't sort of say to whoever wants to come along to come along. But uh, looking forward to that. Got Lily and James with us. How are we doing for time? A couple more minutes and we'll make a start. One thing I felt as I prayed this morning and I've been thinking about the service today is, is, and this might seem a bit strange, but at home, I just think you need to get paper and pen ready. Um, I'm expecting that the Lord is going to speak this morning. And uh, I want to, we've got some paper and pen for here, in, for people here in the room. Uh, we, we, we're thinking about words a little bit today and Jesus being the word and the words that the prophet in the Old Testament uses to, to describe Jesus and so I just feel the Lord is going to bring us a revelation of himself today and we need to be ready to write that down because we don't want to miss those words that he's got for us so and uh, all the all the way through I've been saying well that's 
you know, just just paper and pen. That's what I've been feeling he's saying. And I've been saying, really? Do I just have to say paper and pen? You know, but actually, I couldn't put it down. I had to roll with this. So let's be expectant this morning. Yeah? The Lord is going to speak to us. Um, a few more folks joining online. Another minute, and then we'll make a start. Morning, Nick. Lovely to connect with you this morning. Paul and Lynn have just walked in. Morning, Paul and Lynn. Nice to see you this morning. You're giving us a wave. Okay, we'll make a start. It's our um, final, our fourth candle that we're going to light. Amy, Amy, would you think Blue might come and help me? Blue, would you come and help me light the candles for the Advent? Is that all right? Excellent. Come on over. Right. I'm hoping the matches are here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Right. So we've, we've, lit, we've lit four candles. I'm saying that for Tony. <laughs> we've had three. It's, four can- it's the fourth candle today. Okay, I'll just say that now. We'll get it out in the open. So we had the candle of hope, candle of peace. <laughs> we have the, ca- the candle of hope, the candle of peace, the candle of joy. And today is the candle of love. And so let me read these words. Jesus shows us God's perfect love. He is God's love in human form. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And I want to read these wonderful words from from, um, 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind and envies no one. Love is never boastful or conceited, rude or selfish. Love is not quick uh, to take offense. It keeps no record of wrongs. It does not gloat over other people's troubles, but rejoices in the right, the good and the true. There is nothing that love cannot face. There is no limit to its faith, to its hope, to its endurance. Love never ends. So Blue, are you ready to help me light some candles? Right, we'll start over the other side so we don't burn ourselves. Right, you got it? So we'll light this one. Underneath, that's it. Well done. Good lighting here. And we light this one. Got it? Well done. Let's go over the other side now. We light this one. So we're going to pray now. We light this candle today to remind us of how God's perfect love is found in Jesus. Go for it. Light it. Brilliant. Blow that out. Just gently. No, no, not that one. Blow the the match out. No, no, no. no. That's it. Well done. Blue, thank you. Let's give you a little round of applause. Good lighting. Go and sit down now. That's what we're thinking about today. We're thinking about Jesus and how he just shows us who God is. And God is love. That's what it says in the, in, in, in the word, isn't it? And he, we're just going to be thinking about him today and how he shows us what, what our God is like. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we can join together either here in this room or in our homes. And Lord, wherever we are, you are with us. And we celebrate and enjoy that truth today. And we know that is all rooted in what you've done for us in the incarnation of Jesus, in his coming, living, dying, rising, in his ascension, and through the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. So we thank you this morning for Jesus. And we want to worship you today in spirit and truth. We want to worship you with all of our beings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, come, let us 
this moment as we pray, light of the world, step down into darkness. We've got some folks we know who, who need that experience, that encounter of God, the light of the world, stepping into their darkness in this moment. You may have other people or other situations you know and would like to bring before the Lord this morning. You know, our nation, our nation, our world needs to know that today, doesn't it? In these days, these uncertain days, these difficult days. So let's just pray together. Let's pray it with these words ringing in our ears. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. So we just pray. We pray for, for, for Helen. She's been unwell this week. Lord, we pray, would you step into her, into her mind, into her heart, into her, into her body, bringing healing now in the name of Jesus. We think of Immy up there, just moved over to Bristol. And Karen and Murray and Jed, just, just, it's been a, difficult week in many respects as they've gone through this transition. Lord, we just lift them up to you today. And Lord, we say, light of the world, step into their darkness today, into the struggle of this time. Lord, bring your light, your, your, your wholeness, your healing, your well-being, your, the shalom we're going to be thinking about later. Bring your peace into their situation. Pray for, for Charles and for Anna as they continue to to, to wait on this application with regards to Charles's father. We just pray again, Lord, step into that difficult situation. Go before we pray for breakthrough. Just so we're going to leave a moment of quiet now. The guys are going to play and just, just bring situations before God that you've got in your mind and your heart today where you need and you're praying, you're interceding for that light, the light of Christ to break in. on the ward that they're on they're not near a window and we've been praying that they move Immy up towards a window but um just want to pray light into their situation but I also want to pray physical light into their situation we know what it's like when we have those dark literally dark winter days and we need that sunlight and they're just stuck on this ward so, Lord, we just pray for that supernatural light, but we pray for that physical light as well, that, that just kind of that moving up the ward towards the window. And um, I just really want to pray that into, into their situation.
someone's collapsed and so we've had to call the ambulance so we're going to wait for the ambulance to arrive so it, we're probably just going to just have a little break if that's okay um, so um, if you could uh, online folks if you're happy to just hang in there we'll get going in again in about sort of probably 10 10 or 15 minutes do feel free to go off and get a cup of coffee and come back We'll, we'll pop it on the WhatsApp group when we're going to start and the Facebook as well. So just give us about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but we're just going to pray right now, Lord. We just pray for our dear sister who's, um, you know, in a, not well in this moment. And we just pray, Lord, come Holy Spirit. Would you just be near to her now? We just speak healing in the name of Jesus over her mind, her heart and her physical body. Lord, we just pray peace now. We've sung it, Lord. We've sung that the peace of Christ, that the light of Christ descend upon her in this moment. Lord, we lift her up to you. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, let it be as we have sung, light of the world stepping into darkness. We just pray, step into her life now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, the update is we're, we're waiting for the ambulance and it, it could be up to an hour, hour and a half that, that the person is okay, they're, they're comfortable and we've got uh, some good people alongside her making sure that she is okay. So we're going to carry on with our service this morning. We'll just wait for a few moments while people can re-sign in and, and uh, if, they, if they've signed out and uh, we'll make a start again. So we're going to uh, look at God's word together now. And uh, it's, a, it's our second kind of reading that we've had as part of this uh, sort of season of, of Advent. And uh, it, it's, a real, it's a real Christmassy one. This is really going to get us ready for Christmas. So if, you want, if you've got your Bibles and want to follow, you can turn to the reading. It's in Isaiah 9, and we're going to read from verses 1 to 7. Isaiah 9 from verses 1 to 7. Um, our reading starts, I've got a little bit of background, but our lead, reading starts with the word nevertheless. And that's suggesting that it's got to be there for a reason, isn't it? There's something gone before. Nevertheless, uh, you know, it's like therefore. When we read therefore, there's usually a reason, there's usually a reason it's, that it's, it's there. So a bit of context about our reading now. Our reading starts with this word, and the reason it says nevertheless is because God was speaking to his people, and there was a particular part of his people called Judah, and uh, they were really up against it. And basically what, what had happened was is there was this group called the Assyrians. They were a bit of a superpower at that time in the region, and they were on the move. They'd been sleepy for a long time, but then suddenly they're on the move, and they're going along, and they're taking over places. And they are basically just... just occupying places and uh, Judah was this little place and uh, they were they were up against it they were facing this attack from from the Assyrians and th they, they were pr pretty stuffed really because they had this king called Uzziah and if you remember that that passage it says the year King Uzziah died that's beginning that's sort of further back talks about the king did you talk about this last week kind of I know it's, you think it's Isaiah 6 but you go back for the the king the, the year king Uzziah died really significant because Uzziah Uzziah was a godly king and he led his people in a godly way so what happened was is the godly king died and they had they had other kings who weren't godly so basically what you've got this is superpower coming and they haven't got godly leadership so they were up against it really up against and you read about in these opening chapters of Isaiah and that's why it starts with this word nevertheless so they're up against it and then it says nevertheless and this is what I said there will be um, there will be no more gloom those who were in distress in the past he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali let me just explain that a little bit, okay? Because you, you kind of need to know where they are to understand the next little phrase that uh, is in the, in the reading. So uh, th this were Zebulun and Naphtali were the first places to be occupied by the Assyrians. So they got hit first by this Assyrian onslaught. And both of them are in Galilee. 
But then it says this, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. Beyond the Jordan. So although, although these two little places were the first to fall, to know that pain of occupation longer than any other, these two places would be the first to see the glory of Emmanuel, God with us. They uh, were the place where Christ was born. So we read on. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nations and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoiced at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing their plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot is used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. And then it says this, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness or the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. And then it says this, and the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. I love that. The zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. My, um, my oldest, Ben, had a very traumatic birth. It was very difficult, and uh, for, for a whole host of reasons, my parents had come up to, um, actually, they planned to come, but he was two weeks late, so they weren't supposed to be there for the birth, but they'd end up being there for the birth. So they'd come up, we were living in Teesside, they were living in Cornwall, so it was a long way to come, so they'd come up, so they were just kind of almost hanging around outside the hospital as we went through this um, ordeal of Ben being born. It was... It was Worth it in the end, but it was jolly difficult at the time. But there was this moment that I remember uh, after Ben had been born. Angela was just completely, completely wiped out. And my mum and dad had come to the hospital. And uh, it was back in the days when you could have visitors in hospital. Do you remember those days? <laughs> and there was this moment when I kind of, I can't remember if I took him out or how to brought them in, but it was almost like I kind of remember taking this little baby out and introducing them, him to my parents for the very first time and saying, look, here's Ben, you know. And it was a real kind of proud, proud moment. And, and I think this is kind of what is happening in this passage. I mean, it's a prophetic, it's a looking ahead, but God is almost saying, look, a proud moment, look. This is my son. You know, this is who he is. He's presenting him to the world through the prophet. You know, we've already had the baby kind of coming, being introduced. You look, look back in chapter 7. Now, Hannah talked about this last week. It says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Then later on, you go on to chapter 11. Amazing chapter do take time to read it. There's this picture of this sort of age to come. What will happen when Christ has to return and the, that there's a new heaven and a new earth? There was this, this, it just describes in this beautiful poetic language the kind of like, this is what the kingdom in its fullness is what, what is going to look like. You know, so there's this baby coming. There's this kingdom kind of introduced, this time coming. And in the middle, we have this introducing of the child, the proud parent saying, this, the baby, he's going to achieve this. And this is his name. He's going to make it possible. It's like when, when we read about Jesus' baptism, what happens? It's like God says, doesn't he, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And this is what happens here. God is saying, he's going to be called Wonderful Counselor. 
He's going to be called Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It says of the greatness, the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and overcome his kingdom. Sorry, and throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time forevermore. I love this poem that Hannah put in our little Advent boxes. You know, if you've been following it through, this beautiful little poem, and it goes like this. Sometimes words are not enough for everything we have to share. Words can't beat like a heart or a verb, sweat, a verb, sweat or blood. A noun doesn't get thirsty. An adjective doesn't feel pain. Something gets lost in translation into words. So when God needs to express a love deeper than words, he used a body language of a kind not known on earth before. I love that. We started with this, didn't we? The candle of love that we lit today. That's the body language of Jesus. The body language of Jesus. Now, I, I wish I'd had that, that poem, Hannah, when I did my O-levels. Because I might have actually learned what a verb and an adjective and a noun and all those different things were. It would have been a great help to me, I think. <laughs> This is how God puts it in John 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has, has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. Jump down to verse 14. It says there, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Do you see what's happening here? We, we'd be given words to understand the incarnation, the coming of Jesus, the, the Son of God. But sometimes those words just don't seem enough, do they? I want to show a little clip now. And this is a, a, he, it's an American guy. He's a, he's a sort of poet. But I love this, the, the, the words he uses. It's almost like I haven't got the words, but I have got the words. And I just, let's listen to it now. It's good, isn't it? So he had quite a lot of words there, didn't he? But even a lot of words, the many words he had, they just fell inadequate, inadequate sometimes to, de to describe what is before us, the baby before us. But words is what we have. And I want us just to think for these words this about these words that God offers through the prophet this morning about the incarnation, about Jesus. Just for a few moments, and then I want to invite him to come by his Holy Spirit and speak into our hearts and into our lives. I believe he's got a word for each of us this morning. Here in the room, and you guys watching at home. The guy said, as he struggles to find the words that would adequately reflect that what is, what is in his heart and what he knew God to be, he said, words that we use to point to the truth. We have words to point to the truth. God used words, as limited as they are, to speak through the prophet Isaiah, to introduce the Son, Jesus, the incarnation. And it's like he's given him his, us his name. Yes, we know his name is Jesus and Messiah, but he says he's wonderful counsellor. He's mighty God. He's the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I was looking at different translations and way this has been written, and I've got a few very different ones to bring that all help us understand what these words really mean and who it is we're being introduced to today. Someone has made this into a statement, and this is what they said. You know, the child... As wonderful in counsel is the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. One of the books I was reading translated the passage in this way. It says, an extraordinary counselor is the warrior God. The everlasting Father is the official for well-being. The translation here offers the passage... Uh, for, uh, um, of the passage brings a kind of military slant that's there in the original language. God is our mighty warrior. He's fighting, he's strategizing for peace and well-being, the shalom of the world. And that's what this child will do. That's what his, his purpose in life is. 
I love this. Um, this is a, a, a rabbi um, who's unpacking these, these verses from the Old Testament. And this is what this rabbi says. The Messiah is called by eight names. And five have come from these verses. Among the Messiah's names are Wonderful, Counselor, God, Hero, and Everlasting Father of Peace. The child would be the hero of the world. Isn't that amazing? Christ our hero. It kind of turns upside down on its head what the Marvel comics would say a hero is, doesn't it? These names declare who God is and how he will be revealed and how his purposes and promises will be fulfilled through the, 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 the baby coming and the man that he grew into. I just want to read this quote. It was a quote from one of the commentaries I read about these words before we kind of start to draw to a close because... What I think is, is, is these words say it better than I can say. So just let me read it. It said, the warrior God is an extraordinary counsellor or planner. That is Yahweh, is expert in determining what the future should bring, uh, what the future should bring, and sees that it does so. And Yahweh is capable of making plans and bringing about events that one would never have guessed. Further, the everlasting Father is an officer who brings well-being. The Hebrew word for an officer denotes an army officer, which linked to the description as the, the Yahweh as the warrior God. In this context, shalom, peace, will include the idea of peace. Um, shalom will include the idea of peace, but the, the word more commonly has a broader meaning of well-being, life. As, uh, as a whole, life as a whole going well. This prospect is what the child's name promises Judah. This prospect is what the child's name promises us. He is our wonderful counsellor. He's our mighty God. He's our everlasting father. He's our prince of peace. You know, the people back then, and I think the world as a whole, had turned its back on him. They'd given up on him. And they would li be living with the consequences of turning their back on God, as we so often have to ourselves. But the great thing is, this is so wonderful that God doesn't give up on them. And he doesn't give up on us. He doesn't give up on them because what does he do? He sends that which is most precious to him. As an indication, it shows us how precious we are to him, does it not? So he sends his son even though the world has turned its back on him. And he continues to send his son. His son comes, we sung it, light of the world stepped down into darkness. Continues to, we continue to see the impact of Jesus coming. The wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, continues to change this world in which we live. As we seek and as we pray and as we obey, as we work for him and, in, and seek his influence, his rule, his reign, his power, his peace, it touches us. And it touches the world in which we live in through us by the power of his Holy Spirit. So, language can feel so inadequate, does it, can't it? Sometimes, you know, you get those points where you just look and you think, I've got no words. Those times when you're speechless. But language is what we have. And language is what God has given us. So we have to use words. It's, uh, the prophet uses words in this reading today to introduce the son and to show us what he's like and to show us what he wants for our world. And today, for a moment, we've just inclined our ears to him and we've listened to those words. But I want us to ask the Holy Spirit because I don't want this to just be about my comprehension. I'm rubbish at English. Words are not my thing. But that shouldn't hold me back and hindering me having an experience, an encounter, an awareness, a relationship with the, the living God. So we've got these words and I want to pray for us all today, those at home, those here in the room, that the words we have read 
about who this Jesus is would seek deep within us and we would have a revelation of him, an understanding of him, an experience of him that is greater than we had when we came into this place today. And I don't think that'll be my words. I think that'll be his word, the word revealed to us by the power of his Holy Spirit. So I want us to do a few things just as we kind of finish. I want us to think, I want us to reflect Reflect on these words. What do they mean to you? I want us to recognize. I want us to bring our hearts before the Lord. Be honest with the Lord about where our hearts are at. I want us to be ready to repent. Well, we've got it wrong and we're turning away from him and we're, you know, we're, we're turning our backs on him. I want us to be ready to turn back to him and take hold of all that he has for us. I want to invite his revelation. You know, it talks about the zeal of the Lord. Accomplish this. That talks about God's enthusiasm, doesn't it? God wants to speak to us. He is speaking all the time. It's like his words are in this room, are around you if you're watching at home right now. His word is there for the taking if we just incline our ear to him because he wants us to receive. So just for a few moments today, if you're at home, get your paper and pen. We've got some paper and pens here. If we could just give those out. I want us to wait on the Lord. And I want you to write down what comes into your mind. We're going to pray and just invite the Lord to, to give us a word for today. Might be relating to what we've bread and what we've heard today, that he is that wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Or maybe just God wants to give us a fresh word today. It might lead you to a, a scripture. It might just be a, a, a word or a picture that he wants to put in your mind. But can we just wait on him for a moment now? If you're at home, get your paper, Pen, we're just going to wait on the Lord. And then, and then Danny and, and, and Mark and Sarah are going to just lead us in this wonderful song to finish. So let's just wait on the Lord. Let me just invite him to come. Holy Spirit, would you come? And as we wait on you now, we believe you've got words for us. You might want to take, take the Bible in hand. You may just want to just, just, just open your mind to him and listen. Come, Holy Spirit, would you speak? Your servants are listening. Jesus. We love you, Lord.
not just for us this Christmas, but for our community, for our loved ones, that we would indeed come and see what God has done that we would look upon the Christ child, upon the baby Jesus in the manger, remembering that he grew into a man, that he was nailed to a cross. He died, he rose, he was ascended into heaven, and now he has poured out his spirit for each and every one who would put their trust in him. So I say, we say, come and see what God has done, because he's going to do some amazing things. He is doing some amazing things. So we thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you've spoken, that we've heard your words, some lovely comments coming through on the live feed there, just things that the Lord is speaking to people. And I'm sure we've got some great words in the room as well. So, Lord, we just thank you. in a moment's time um, we, we, we've not had the ambulance come yet but uh, our sister's doing a lot better she's up and uh, so we're just waiting for the ambulance to come we're going to go online in a few moments if you want to join us for a cup of uh, coffee and a chat on the screen we'll get that up and running in a few moments time um, quite a momentous day today this is the last Sunday service we will have as Truro Baptist Church. When we come back in January, we'll be City Life Church, and uh, you'll see the signs up and everything. I'm going to write to you all next week just to give you a bit of an update on that. So we thought we'd just get Christmas out the way, and then I'll write to you probably sort of the, the middle of next week as we head towards Sunday. There's no service next Sunday, but if you want to come for a walk, we're going to be meeting down at Gilling Bay's Beach where we've got parking near the beach. We're going to go for a little walk along the seafront or maybe round to Mainforth. We'll see how many of us there are. We're going to have little groups of six, and we're going to have a stroll together. And uh, obviously that's weather depending. Christmas Day, we've really gone around the houses with what to do on Christmas Day. Um, we're going to have a service here at 10 o'clock, very short service for about, I don't know, half an hour or so. It will be live streamed uh, so you can join us on Christmas morning to uh, celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. But if you want to come and join us here on Christmas morning, you can. We'll be here from 10 o'clock. And again, it will just be about half an hour service. So bless you all. Have a fantastic Christmas if we don't see you before. And have a great week. Blessings. Thank you.